My name is Connor Nolan. I'm a fifth year student at GMIT studying computer and electronic engineering. And this is a short video introducing my final year project, which is titled Advanced Encryption Standard for Networking. This project compares software and hardware implementations of AES-128 and the results demonstrate the benefits of hardware offload of cryptography to reduce the CPU's workload. So how does AES work? AES uses a private key to encrypt or lock the incoming plain text into an unreadable ciphertext. This same key is used in the decryption process to return the ciphertext to its original form. So now let's have a look at the encryption flowchart. Here we can see the ciphertext two inputs, the plain text, which is 16 bytes of ASCII we convert to hex, and the key, which is also 16 bytes. The first operation is the add round key. Here the key and the plain text are XOR to give us the following state. This state is passed into the first round of encryption where it meets the sub-byte step. Here a formula involving each byte's multiplicative inverse creates the new state. The next step is the shift rows where the state is rearranged into a 4x4 matrix and bytes are shifted to the left as follows. The most complex step is the mix columns. Here the state's columns are multiplied by the corresponding rows of a special matrix. The four resulting dot products are then XOR to give us the value for each cross-reference byte creating our new state. Finally, another add round key is performed with the newly expanded key, concluding the first round of encryption which is then performed a further 8 times before the 10th and final round completes the transformation of our plain text into a cipher text which is now totally unreadable. The decryption process requires the same steps carried out in reverse order. Here, architectural block diagrams show how these algorithms are implemented using a hierarchical RTL design that will be synthesized onto an FPGA. Using Vivado Design Studio, we can see how those diagrams translate to actual RTL. Here we can see the different modules involved in the encryption process. Notice rounds 1 to 9, followed by the final round of encryption. Inside one particular round, we can see the instantiations of previously mentioned steps, sub-bytes, shift rows, mix columns and add round key. Opening the mix columns module, we can see some of the more complex and intricate calculations involved in AES. Here the simulator tool shows us how many clock cycles it takes to execute our encryption and decryption processes. This IP is then packaged and integrated into a block design along with the Basis 3 board softcore processor, Microblaze and a UR to interact with the design. Once the bitstream is generated it can be exported to the Xilinx SDK where an embedded C application is written to test the design. From here I can program the FPGA with my design and a C application which will demonstrate AES-128 in Cypher blockchain mode. With the FPGA programmed I can open up a terminal application such as Hercules Setup to interface with the board and my design. Our C application takes 16 bytes of plain text at a time and assigns them to four 32-bit registers for input to our hardware design. Four 32-bit output registers then display the calculated cipher text which is read by our C application and displayed in ASCII and HEX on the terminal. Cipher blockchain or CBC is the mode of operation used here. This means the output of each block is XORed with the input of the next to create a blockchain of encryption. It is far more secure than basic AES or AES ECB electronic codebook as it is known. So what did the results say? The hardware implementation of AES-128 in this project was capable of encrypting 16 bytes in 10 clock cycles while decryption took a further 19 cycles. These results were achieved with a 100 MHz clock. A software implementation was also designed for this project in C++, although it was not demoed in this video. Here clock cycles were far greater at approximately 2000 and 1500 for encryption and decryption respectively on a CPU with a 2.9 GHz clock. These high numbers can be explained by the fact that the CPU is also performing other tasks in conjunction with the crypto application, further underlining the advantage of offloading crypto to a dedicated hardware device. This chart shows the estimated throughput in thousands of packets per second based on these two implementations with hardware performing considerably better in both encryption and decryption. Thanks for watching this video. You can find all the source code for this project on GitHub at cmsnolan forward slash AES128.